All right, so this video is going to talk about analyzing the free body diagrams and go through a refresher of the notes that we took. Uh, first off, what we're going to talk about each level of information that we can get from a diagram depending upon the information given. If we are just given the direction of the forces, meaning we have a picture, we have the box, and we only have the arrows showing the direction, there are only two things that we can determine. The first thing we can determine is the direction of the net forces and then whether or not those forces are balanced. So for example, with this first one here, this first diagram, the only information I can gather is that the horizontal forces, when looking at those horizontal forces, the net forces to the right and that the vertical forces are balanced, that those two forces are equal and balanced, so therefore their net force is going to be zero. I don't know what direction the object is moving. I don't know where the object is located. I just can only tell that information about the forces in general. With the second one, I can see that there are no horizontal forces and that the net force of uh, the vertical forces is moving in the upward direction. Again, I don't know if that means that the object itself is actually moving upward. I just know that the net force is in the upward positive direction. For the second one, I can tell that the horizontal net force is to the left, and then again, the vertical forces are balanced. And then finally, on my last example here, we have that both, uh, there are no horizontal forces, and the vertical forces are in balance. So we can get some information, but it's not really a ton of information. So let's add a little bit more. If we know both the direction of the forces and the type of force, we can now gather a lot more information. We can still get the direction of the net force. We can still tell if the forces are balanced. Um, we can now also tell how the object is moving, like what direction it's moving, and get a general idea of where its location is. So looking at our first example, if I have labeled those arrows, now I can tell that the object is sitting on a surface, and I know this because if there's a normal force, that means that my object is resting on something stable, a solid surface. So I know that it's not in the air. And then I can tell that it is speeding up to the right. Um, and I know that because the applied force is in the right, is in the rightward direction. So that is the direction of the motion. Applied always goes in the direction of the motion. And I know that there's no friction. So therefore it must be speeding up in that direction. For my second example, if I added the labels for tension and weight, I know that the object is hanging in the air because there is no normal force. If, if, if this object was on a surface, there wouldn't be tension, it would be normal. Um, and that there's a speeding up in the upwards direction. Um, now technically this, there could be two different representations of this. Either it is speeding up and moving up or it could also be slowing down when it's moving down. Um, so there are two answers for this one. For the third example, um, we know that the object is speeding up to the left and moving across the surface. Again, I know it's on a surface because of the fact that there is a normal force. I know it is moving to the left because that is the direction of the applied force. I know that it is speeding up because my applied force is greater than the friction. And then the last example, um, the object is falling through the air. We know that it is falling because drag is just like friction. Drag is always in the opposite direction of the motion. So that means that this must be moving downward. And it's at a constant speed because these two, val these two arrows are equal in size. So therefore, they um, are balanced. So the, the, the speed of the object falling is constant. So just by having the labels, we can get a lot more information. Let's add the last little bit, which is magnitude, or how strong each of these forces are. We can tell the direction and magnitude of the net force. We can tell if the forces are balanced. We can tell how the object is moving. We can get an idea of the location. And because we have magnitude, if we know the mass, we can also determine the object's acceleration. So let's walk through this example here. So based on the arrows, just looking at the arrows, I can tell that the vertical forces are balanced, 
because my normal and weight are balanced. And just as a side note, anytime that the motion is horizontal, the uh, weight and normal will always be balanced. The only time your vertical forces will be unbalanced is if the motion is up and down. Um, we can also tell that the object is sitting on a surface, again, because of the normal force, and that there is a negative, um, the net force of motion is in the negative direction. And finally, the object is moving to the left because that's the applied side and the friction side is on the right. So this is the direction of the, the motion um, because that is the, the side that has the applied force. Other information we have, I know that the mass is 10 kilograms. Now, since I know the mass is 10 kilograms, I can calculate the value of my weight. Weight is always mass times, acceler or mass times gravity, so I know my mass is 10 kilograms. Um, unless told, you can always assume that the gravity is gravity on Earth, which is 9.8. So that means that the weight of my object is 98 kilograms, so I can fill in that space on my diagram. Since this is on a flat surface, as I said, when the, when the motion is horizontal, weight and normal force are always going to be identical. So since my weight is 98 newtons, my normal force is also going to be 98 newtons. Last, I'm trying to find my net force. Um, or I want to find acceleration. In order to find the acceleration, I have force equals mass times acceleration. So I am going to want to um, figure out what my net force is. Net force is the addition of your two forces of motion. So my applied force is 8 to the left, and the friction is 2 newtons to the right. Remembering that left is a negative direction, I'm going to add my negative 8 plus the 2, so my net force is a total of negative 6 newtons. Since I have my net force, I can go back to Newton's second law, where F equals ma, force equals mass times acceleration, so negative 6 equals 10 times acceleration. I'm going to divide my net force by the mass, and that's going to give me an acceleration of negative six, negative 0.6 meters per second squared. So that's how we can go about finding all of our information. Um, we're going to do a couple more examples here. In this example, and this is how you're going to see them on the test, okay, we have a six kilogram crate attached to a cable being lifted off the ground with a net force of 16.2 newtons. We want to determine the value to determine all of the missing values. So things I can fill in right off the bat. I can fill in my mass. I know it's six kilograms. I can also fill in my net force. I know it's 16.2. So now the easiest thing to do would just be to go ahead and find my acceleration. So acceleration is going to be my net force divided by my mass, because Net force is mass times acceleration, so I'm going to divide 16.2 by 6, and that'll give me 2.7 meters per second squared as my acceleration. At this point, now I can leave, I can ignore this information. I don't need this for anything else for this or at this moment for this particular equation. So if I want to go ahead and fill these in, the easiest one to fill in is going to be weight. Weight is mass times gravity. My mass is 6 kilograms. I'm going to multiply that by gravity on Earth, which is 9.8. That allows me to fill in the 58.8 newtons for my weight. In order to get my tension, tension is the larger of the two values in this situation right, because the arrow is longer, which means when I take this number and add this value, I'm going to get an answer of 16.2, remembering that because this is in a downward direction, it is going to be in a negative, 
it's going to be a negative number. So I'm going to take my, my equation would be F net equals my tension minus my weight. So I have 16.2 equals tension minus 58.8, which means in order to solve for T, I have to add 58.8 to both sides. So my tension is 75 newtons. Oops, let's see, go back to that one second. Um, and again, the reason I wrote this as F net equals T minus W is because net force is the combination, the addition of these two forces. But we need to remember that this one is a negative force. Okay. Last example, um, rightward force applied to a 27.5 kilogram box, accelerating it to the right at a rate of 17.9 meters per second squared. Filling in what I know, my mass is 27.5, and the 17.9 meters per second squared is going to be the acceleration. To solve for my net force, I'm going to do 27.5 times 17.9 because F equals MA, net force equals mass times acceleration, so that is my net force, my total net force. The next thing I'm going to solve for is go ahead and find my applied force. 492.25, my net force, equals my positive minus my negative. So my positive force minus the negative force. So I'm going to have A minus 25. So when I add, in order to solve for A, I would add 25 to both sides, which gives me 517.25. A way to check your work Take that positive and subtract the 25 and just make sure it adds up to the same value here. The last bit here is my weight and my normal force. Now again, my motion is in a vertical, or sorry, is in a horizontal way, which means my weight and my normal are balanced. They're going to be identical. My object is not falling through the floor. So I can just go ahead and find my weight and my normal force will be equal to that same value. So I'm going to take my 27.5, multiply it by gravity, which gives me 269.5. That is my weight. Because these two are balanced, I do not have to do any work. I can just automatically put that same value up as my normal force. Okay. Before um, we finish this, what I would like to do is go to positive physics and just walk you through um, a couple of the problems of how they work on this um, on this this format. So we're going to do a free body diagram analysis two. Okay. What uh, for this um, program itself, they do not show different size arrows, so we can't go based upon the arrow size. We have to look over here and look at what is being um, written as far as the speed. So we're given that F net is 150, and we know the speed is increasing. If speed is increasing, that means that my applied force is going to be greater than my drag. How much greater? Well, since drag is a negative, whatever this value is, this number minus 60 has to equal 150. So the easiest way to solve for that is to take your net force and add the drag. So it would be 150 newtons. Oops, sorry, not 150. 200, 210 newtons. Hey, I can do math. Um, so 150 plus 60 gives me 210. As for my normal force, since they are moving in a horizontal manner, my normal force is going to be identical to the weight. 
what happens if they are deep?